Welcome back to Glam Garbage. I am the store brand Makara Tours, Claire. It is the most wonderful time of the year, otherwise known as Min March. And because of that, I thought it was the perfect time to get started on this particular project. I have been planning it for quite some time, and now I've decided to do as the newbies say and seize the day. I am embarking today on DIYing all of Yoongi's seesaw outfit from the final Speak Yourself concert in Seoul. From toe to tip, this outfit is all Anne Villamister, and I actually, I don't know how much it costs because I just know it would disgust me. Let's, let's do a quick Google. Oh God, it's so much money. Okay, so the open knit sweater is 1,964 US dollars. The floral jacquard skinny trousers are $1,275. The tank top uh, is 500 US dollars. And then the boots are actually $1,149. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to get the original, so I'm going to do what this channel is built on and attempt to use my powers for good and thwart capitalism by making it myself. As I said in my last video, this is going to be a two-parter because I am knitting a whole sweater. And I don't think that I can hope to do that in one video. Being real with myself, I might not even finish this sweater by the time that mid March is over, but Yoongi Day is not so much a day as it is a state of mind. I challenge all of you to live each and every day as though it were Yoongi Day. This is mostly going to be a from scratch kind of project, but let's start with the tank top because it is the quickest and easiest part. It's just an easy modification. You can either thrift flip or I got this one from Amazon and I will link in the description box. You're going to want just a simple black racerback tank top. So what you're gonna need here is a fabric paint pen. I'm gonna be using a Posca paint pen, as well as access to a printer. The text is just Times New Roman. It's a classic, good serif font. And I made the top 150 size and the bottom text 102, I believe. And you're gonna want that bottom text right up underneath the top. I started out by going around the outline of all of the letters with an X-Acto knife and quickly got bored of that because it was taking too long and I'm not really that good with an X-Acto, so I ended up using scissors, and that went a lot faster. And once I had my stencil, I taped it down onto my shirt, and then I got out my Posca paint pen and started filling in the letters. So honestly, this looks quite good. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to brighten up the rest of the layers. You see the W is a little bit brighter and that's because I've done a second layer on that, but I'm letting the rest of them dry a little bit more and then I'm gonna add another layer on all the letters, but that looks pretty good. Thank you, Posca. So that shirt went really well. That was easy, quick, and it turned out the way I wanted it to. Let's hope that that energy carries over into the pants. A lot of times on this channel you have seen me just kind of raw dogging pattern making where I just kind of put fabric on the floor and I cut and hope for the best. And usually that works, but that's only if I'm doing like a shirt or anything that's made out of just rectangles. If the geometry gets more complex, I'm bad at math. So pants are something that I am a little less confident in my ability to just wing. And so I am going to be using a pattern that I found on Etsy, link below. And the original pants are skinny, they're skinny trousers. Um, and I have decided to use a slim fit pant just because that's personally more comfortable for me. I am not shaped like Yoongi as much as I wish I was. So I am using something that makes me feel more comfortable and something that I could wear more and be in motion in and be, you know, dancing, doing the seesaw choreo if I really want to. This is where research really pays off because when I first saw this video, I thought that he was wearing like a black and gray subtle camo moment. But then looking up the actual garment, I found that the their title is Silk Floral Jacquard, which is amazing because it told me exactly the kind of fabric that I needed to look for. This is what I ended up getting. I love it. I got the last two yards of it, so Sorry if you also love it, but the key words you're gonna need to look for are black, gray, floral, jacquard. You can either put faux silk in, you could get a twill. Um, you're gonna want one with a kind of, little bit of a stiffer drape, especially if you're gonna use the same pattern that I am. They have recommended fabric types on there. Don't get one that stretches unless you're doing an actual skinny trouser. That's my recommendation. 
the original fabric also has kind of less contrast in terms of the lighter gray and the black, but I really like this. So while I consider dyeing it, I don't think I'm going to just because I enjoy this as it is. And I'm not gonna make more work for myself, even though I usually do. We're changing. It's a new year, new me, baby. I like to start with the waist darts on the back of my pants because I need to emphasize what my mother gave me and shape that booty. So mark and stitch a nice long triangle like your pattern tells you on both sides of your back pieces. Then mark 3 eighths of an inch to the inside of the stitched line and cut away the excess fabric before pressing the seam open. Then you're going to take the two back pieces and stitch them together because we have to put it away. It's too powerful, we have to put it away. We can't make chaps. The world is not ready for seesaw chaps. A very vital part of the process is stopping entirely to give the baby attention. I'm not gonna get anything done for like 20 minutes. I actually didn't get anything done the rest of the day. I just went and laid down on the couch with my boy. So next you're gonna move on to pockets just because you always wanna get those attached while your pieces are still flat. So the first thing you're going to do is cut and interface your pocket opening and then attach that to the front pieces. So you see this little strip here, it's got one edge that is shorter than the other and that edge lines up to the outer edge of my large front piece. So then you're gonna press this seam open and when you turn it around, you'll have a nice enclosed seam. My favorite pockets in terms of user friendliness are something called patch pockets, just because you slap them on there, super easy. Uh, these are something called slash pockets that I'm demonstrating, and they're not hard as long as you're careful about which side is which. If you are kind of like me and aren't always great with all the right and left, um, it's easier to mark with Taylor's chalk the right and wrong side and where this goes. Um, but you can also just kind of go for it and keep track in your head. Doesn't always work for me, might work for you. And of course you can always undo a stitch. You can't uncut something, but you can unstitch it. So measure twice, cut once. That's what I always say. And by always, I mean, <laughs> I hardly ever make mock-ups, baby. Once you have the opening for your pocket sewn on, you're gonna take your pocket interiors and you are going to mark your seam allowance all the way around. In my case it is three-eighths of an inch. So once you have your allowance marked you're going to overlock stitch all the way around the edges that's going to keep your pocket from fraying when you know you reach into it and stuff. You could also use a serger for this step if you have one, but I do not, so I am just using my machine's overlock stitch instead. Oliver, off the mirror. Oliver, there's no cat in there. There is no cat in the mirror, please. Please don't knock it down. So once your piece is overlocked, you're actually gonna take the edges and press all the seam allowance in towards the right side of the fabric. When you're pinning your pocket to your pants, you're actually pressing it right side to wrong side. So the right side of the pocket itself will be pinned onto the wrong side of the pants. So you're pinning the fabric just kind of down. So when you are done pinning, you're gonna have this opening right here. 
but you're only gonna see the right side of the fabric. Like so. With the fabric face down, secure the pocket with a basting stitch using a longer stitch length. Then turn it over, put the stitch length back to normal, and stitch a nice pretty line using your basting stitch as a guide. You can then take the basting stitch out and you'll be left with your nice pretty line and your secured pocket. Now the zipper fly is something that can seem really intimidating and it does definitely get easier the more times you do it, but it's something that I kind of forget how to do every time I have to do it because I don't like doing it and I don't practice. Um, it's like making a series of sandwiches and hoping that the butter doesn't end up on the outside of the bread, but that's not like a perfect metaphor because sometimes you want the butter on the outside of the bread. What if you're making your grilled cheese? But I digress. I'm gonna put a link in the description box to someone explaining how to do a zipper fly who can do it better than I can. And here you see me walking off screen so I can unzip my pants and see what I did wrong because I did mess up. So I turned off the camera last night because I think it added a little pressure and I finished the fly and now I have stitched the legs together and I just have a few finishing touches to do before I am done with these pants. And so moving on to the waistband, I have right here my waistband piece. It is interfaced and you can see that I have finished one edge and that's just because it's going to be easier to work with. That's actually going to be my inside edge. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take this piece and you're going to take the raw edge and line it up to the right side, right side to right side of your pants. Make sure when you're lining these up that you leave the seam allowance at the end. So I am leaving a seam allowance of a quarter inch on either side of the short edge. Cause we're gonna cover that up before you sew it down. So I do a lot of sewing where I work because I'm a textile conservator. And uh, the worst thing about not being in your own studio and having to like use supply, ow. having to use supplies that are not your own is that I cannot um, just stick pins in my mouth willy nilly, you know? Cause they're not my pins. These are my pins, I can put them. I was about to say anywhere I like and that, I realized how bad that sounded, but you know. Okay. Now that this is all pinned and I've stopped bleeding, it's time to sew it in. So I'm going to be using seam allowance once again of 3 eighths of an inch. You can use whatever your pattern says, whatever you want to. Now, Got this waistband, press the seam allowance up towards the waistband so that it lays flat. Now you're gonna take that seam allowance that I said that you left on the short edge and you're going to press it inside towards the inside of the waistband and sew it down. Now that you've got your seam allowances done, fold this over and pin it on the inside. So once you have turned it over and pinned it all on the inside, you are going to be turning it right side out and then stitching in the little ditch left over in between your seams. So in the ditch that's left over from where you turn the seam out, that is where you're going to be stitching. You're gonna to wanna to go careful and slow, and I'm not always very good at stitching in the ditch because it requires patience and I have very little, but you're gonna to wanna to try and keep it so that it's in the ditch so that it looks nearly invisible. After all that was done, I added my buttons and I was done. I feel like I can't call this like a whole reveal just because the whole outfit isn't done, but I wanted to show you kind of like a, a bit of the progress that's been made, like pants, the top, and also to show you how I think I will style these pants separately from this whole thing, just because I know I'm not gonna wear this top all that often. I don't wear a lot of graphic shirts, but let me let me just change into something that I think I might wear to work. You know? Cute. 
could tuck this in if I wanted to. I don't want to. This is really cute. I like this a lot. Okay, so that's it for today's video and part one of making Yoongi's final seesaw outfit. Next time, I will be knitting a whole sweater. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be a time. I also thought to make part two a little bit more interesting for you guys, instead of just it being a time lapse of me struggling to knit for a long time, that we could do a bit of a Q&A. So if you have any questions about crafting or BTS or me or my cats, then you can put them in the comments or in the link at the description box and I will answer them. I hope you enjoyed part one and see you next time for part two. Not to suck my ass, but these pants came out really cute. Um, <laughs>